Okay, you can see I just have very few slides, but uh, if Judd just put the poem in the chat, it might look very much like this image on the left. And you should be able to see that I've got a blue tape and it's taped to my studio sink. This is often the workstation for any poem I'm working with that I didn't write myself. Uh, so there's the poem there. And I believe I asked Judd in late February of 2020, if he would consider letting me uh, use embrace this poem for an artist book. And, and so we just finished it. I finished the last manual labor on it, April 24th of this year, to give you a sense of how long I've been working with this particular poem. So you can see my handwriting I was trying to figure out what can I do with this poem that will complement it. So uh, I had a few false stabs. One was that maybe I would make portraits of all the botanicals that you can make rope from, like hemp and jute and sisal and so forth. But that, Im that imagining the book would be very horizontal. And as I rejected that idea, I realized that part of the rejection is that I wanted the book to be vertical. And in knowing that I wanted the book to be vertical, I realized I wanted to follow the rope. So I kind of leave the narrator on the dock and follow the rope down and down and down. So you can see, I, I took this idea of the brown and braided cord. I wrote rope below and this funny little tornado of a drawing was the thought of making the closure for the book a brown and braided rope. But I rejected that idea too. And then I, I wanted to see how it could break into page size. And a lot of that happens too in conversation with my friend Scott Vile from Essentius Press because Scott did the uh, typesetting and the printing of the text for this project. and. Uh, we have done several projects together. I, I should stop and count one day, but uh, I don't know what I'll do when Scott retires. So I still haven't taken the poem down yet. It's still right there. In fact, I took the picture on the right today. So I'm starting to get a sense of how many pages I'll need to uh, accommodate the text, where the breaks will be, the page breaks, and uh, also, you know, what's gonna happen on the title page. I'm starting to think about that. And also the colophon where I'll tell a little bit about the project. So the next step was to do a lot of research. <clears throat> and I didn't include any photographs here, but I read a lot of Jules Verne, which might sound silly. I mean, he was, he was writing 130 years ago about uh, the deep ocean and the center of the universe. and and things that scientists knew nothing about, but he was fascinated and wanted to imagine that deep ocean and um, what might be at the center of the planet. So I started to, to read Jules Verne and I started to look at a lot of uh, science sites for what creatures are below in the deep Atlantic. And normally I would have made trips to aquariums or um, marine biology labs, but because it was the uh, time of COVID, I did all of this research using printed books and magazine articles and uh, the internet to watch uh, films from the Monterey Aquarium and so forth. So after I settled on the imagery and how it would go from from the dock down to the, to the very deep. I then started to think about what the paper would look like and could I get the paper to go darker as we open the book down and down and down. So I tried some different methods for making the paper darker. You can see on the left, it's, I'm, I'm wiping the dry plate just where the image is and leaving the heavily inked plate. Sometimes I tried with a brayer to roll just a plate and print that. And eventually I settled on a nice Japanese paper that I stained with a 
a beautiful black ink. And so I did an ink wash at the start. So it was very pale. And as I went deeper, the, uh, I stained the paper blacker. So that meant I also had to think about what kind of ink and those transitions from the lighter areas to the darker areas. So I used black ink, black with silver in it, uh, white with silver in it, and straight white ink, all sometimes within the same plate. I decided too that above the title would be a bird, a bird, a bird, so that, bird, so that we and then enter into the book. So this is a proof from uh, the title page. So you see this is actually, for those of you who make books, I know a lot of you here make books, this becomes the a front cover paste down. The bird is on the inside of the front cover. And here are some proofs. Uh, they're, the dry points themselves uh, are designed to accommodate either three or four pages down because the book reads vertically and the page width is five and a half inches. So uh, the one on the left is four pages. Once it's cut and folded, it makes four pages. And here is Circling the Square Press and Gardener where I did all of the printing for this book. I'm a member there. It's a, a, a wonderful workspace. And here is a long view. It's an old storefront right on Water Street. I imagine some of you know it. Some of you might even be members. And then uh, this is the press I worked on. You can see I've got a, a white ink on black paper proof there. And the, the shiny glass-like object is the plate. So I use a very thin plastic. It doesn't hold up forever. So there's nine books that I made. Um, I probably could have pushed it for another two possibly, but each plate breaks, each time you put the plate through the press, it breaks down just a, a little tiny bit. It's really not noticeable until a certain point and then it's very noticeable. So here's a, a better view of the plate. Everything is made in mirror reverse. I score the plastic with an etching tool and so um, it's actually very easy because it is a clear plate. It's very easy to transfer imagery from uh, the original drawing to the plate and get things where you want them. It's not, not anything difficult about that. And here's a layout with the first few pages. So you see the inside of the front cover has the bird and the waves is page two, and then the title page. Scott also uh, took this title rope and foil stamped it on the, uh, for me, on the book cloth for the front cover of the book. So on the opposite side of this bird is the word rope in silver. And here you see the four pages of the poem and the last two pages of the poem, which are here, and then the uh, jellyfish and a brittle starfish with some shrimp. And then the transition gets um, pretty dark pretty quickly. So this is a technique called a la poupée where you ink the uh, plate with a different color. So it's inked in black and black and silver up until about here. And then it's silver and white and white. And this is just continuing on. The book is 18 pages, including the two that are glued to the inside of the covers. So 18 times six and a half inches tall makes for a tall long book. So I think after, my intention is that when you read the poem and you have this sense of this rope coming up, pulling the sea up, you're able to go down below and see what is down there, which is something that the poem doesn't do. And I'm hoping that the experience for the reader will be delicious in some way. Uh, to support the, the joy of reading the poem. And then uh, the inside of the last cover is the colophon where 
they're numbered and signed. And here's a group of them. This was the day Judd came over and we signed them all. But I, I love repeatable pattern. So I like this shot of all of them spread out at, together. Signing them and was terrifying. Was terrifying. <laughs> yes, we had to use white, white ink. Um, and I like to I always like to brag when my books are made entirely in Maine, although of course it's a small planet and the paper and the book cloth were from Japan. I'm not sure where the book board was made or the adhesive, but um, it was made in Maine and um, I did design it and bind it in my studio in Freeport. I printed the images uh, onto the pages at Circling the Square Press and Gardner. Judson Merrill of Portland wrote the text, Scott Vile at Ascensius Press and Bar Mills designed and printed the letterpress text and each book in this limited edition is signed and numbered by the artist and the writer. And this is, this is the book outside of the box. And this is a drop spine box, which is also sometimes referred to as a clamshell. And I, I liked that nautical reference for this particular book. And to, to set the viewer or reader up, uh, I made the clamshell go vertically too. So it's a subtle cue to get the reader to realize they're now going to open this cover from bottom top to top and then continue to read as in a vertical, like dropping an anchor or following the anchor down to the bottom. So that was my process. I think that's it. Yes.